I'm sorry? Uh, this is sine of theta is equal to negative 2. And this is your constraint. This is going to be the constraint. So the first thing, here's our problem. We have secant of theta equals negative 2. Do we know what the angle is? Do we know the angle? No, right? Remember, theta is representing your angle. So we don't know what the angle is. However, we know what the point is, which is negative 2. Is that on our unit circle that we've talked about, that we've worked with? No. So when it's not in the unit circle, we need to make sure we create our secant, our triangle, right? Now, the main important thing is secant. We need to know from last section what does secant represent on a triangle. So if I draw a triangle, let's just draw a generic one right now. If I was going to draw a generic triangle, secant represents what? I need to know this if I secant. Does anybody know off the top of their head they want to think, Summer? It represents the 1 over x uh, as on the, um, on the unit circle, right? Or on a coordinate point, it would be the radius over x. Um, but on a triangle, we could say it also represents the hi hypotenuse over adjacent. Very good. So we could say that. How can I write this as a fraction, though? If I put this like that, now it's a fraction, right? So you could say that's negative 2 over, I'm sorry, that can't work. Your hypotenuse can never be your hypotenuse cannot be negative. Your hypotenuse is always going to be a positive um, value. Well, what I did was I just made it's still a negative, but it's going to be a negative one. OK? So then, so if I know that secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, I can use Pythagorean theorem to find this, right? So we have 4 equals uh, 1 plus a squared. So I get square root of 3 when I go ahead and solve. Right? I'm just kind of moving along. You need me to figure it, go through it, Tajay? Remember, a squared equals, oh, I'm sorry. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, remember, c squared is my 4, or 2 squared, equals negative 1 squared plus b squared. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus b squared equals 4. Minus 1, minus 1. b squared equals 3, square root. b equals the square root of 3. Right? Yes. Now, here's where, um, here's where it gets a little tricky, though. Because we don't know right now if square root of 3, that could actually technically, remember you guys, that could be a plus or a minus, right? Let's actually look at this on a unit circle. So I just wrote up a generic triangle. But really, we said negative 1 is negative. That means it's going to go in this negative direction. So it's going to actually look something like this. Negative 1, here's my theta, and here's square root of 3. However, could I also write the triangle? If I did theta there and like this, could I do that as well? Because all we know is secant is 2 over negative 1. That's the only thing we know. But so could this be positive and the negative? Yeah, because all we know is it's 2 over negative 1. That's 2 over negative 1, and that's 2 over negative 1. So we have two possibilities. We have a possibility of our triangle could be in quadrant 1 or, our quadrant, or I'm sorry, quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. So there's two possibilities for our triangle. How do we determine which one's correct? Because they're not the same. This one has an opposite of square root of 3. This one has an opposite side of my triangle of negative square root of 3. And that's going to change the signs, right? Because this one's sign is positive. This one's sign is negative. The values are the same, but one's positive and one's negative. So we look to our constraint. And again, it says sine is greater than 0. So again, we have to look back into that quadrant that I had you guys write down. And we need to think about when is sine greater than 0? What quadrants? Yes, Casey, go for it. 1 and 2. So are one of these triangles in 1 or 2? Yes. So therefore, that's our triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to redraw it. 
And now, going back to your homework, now, can you guys go through and do the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangents? It's just the same thing over and over and over again. OK? So that's all you guys are going to do for that. Make sense? Questions? Preguntas? That's all you guys got to do. Just the main 